so uh, for example if you purchase a building or land whose cost is 30000 and when you acquired it it was of 30000 but the possession was given you when the cost was 50000 so the price of that building will be 30000 which will be recorded in your books and apart from that the other concept is realization concept so realization concept tells us that the revenues will always be recorded when they have been earned so for example if a seller who signs a contract to sell his products to a customer on 1st of the month and he gives the possession of that product on 30th so he will realize all the profit on 30th not on 1st because the actual possession will be given to him on 30th of the date hey come on shree okay i'll be explaining the dual aspect concept the dual aspect concept is that it's the concept of double entry so uh, in this uh, there has to be a corresponding credit for every debit that's made in the transaction so when any machinery is introduced into an organization there is a debit to the machinery account and a corresponding credit which is made to the cash account okay so the next chapter ma'am okay so let's So guys I am going to tell you something about materiality uh, as you can assume by name itself the transaction large enough to matter the organization provide provision for those transactions who influence which influence the financial position of the company uh, the transaction which do not impact on the financial position so we don't have to consider all those transactions so the question arises what is the material transaction what is the immaterial transactions and the answer is simple the transaction which influence the profit and loss of the organization those are considered as the material transaction so the concept of materiality varies according to the uh, size of the organization guys size does matter so the multinational company who having the turnover of uh, 100 to million dollar may consider the 1 million transaction as a non material transaction but for the small kind of organizations 1 million is a big deal it 
actually they can exceed from that ram Shreya, it's your turn now. All right, all right, guys. I'll be telling you about two principles, two concepts actually, that are accounting period and the money measurement concept. So, uh, according to money measurement concept, so the concept tells us that every recorded event or transaction is measured in terms of money. That is the local currency used in that country. Using this principle, any event or happening that does not have a monetary value is never recorded in the books of accounts. Example: skills of employees or the quality of services provided to the customers. All these things are never recorded in accounting books. So basically, we record only those transactions that have money, monetary value in it. And now it's turn for the accounting period concept. An accounting period is the time span in which certain financial events take place. The accounting period is generally of a quarter or a year, and that reflects the financial activity that occurs during that time. But even though accounting period tend to be generally similar, the start and the end dates of those time period can be drastically different. Not all companies begin their fiscal year on 1st Jan, and likewise, not all of them end it with 31st December. Ideally, accounting period starts from 1st April and ends to 31st March. This is also called the financial year. That's it. Hi guys. I'm Shreya. I'm Sundar. I'm Shruti. I'm Kanan. And I'm Neha. And we are the students of Christ, Christ Institute, Institute of, of Management, Labasa. We made this learning video to explain the concepts of GAAP. I hope you understand everything. And I hope you like this video a lot. And guys, if you like the video, please like the video. I mean, please hit the like button. And please, please, please do comment. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. See you guys later. Have an amazing weekend. Have fun. Be safe. All the best. Please don't forget to like the video. Okay. Bye. Bye.